Hey everyone, Shabby M here and welcome and Merry Christmas to our Christmas special show here, Seasons Beatings. Now this might be a little bit more fun than it is serious, but that's the best way forward here from East Rutherford, New Jersey. We've got five matches for you, all very Christmassy themed. Let's get into match number one. And then here we go for our opening match of this Christmas special. It's a little bit of Randy Orton, of course, has been on fantastic form as of recent over on Mayhem. Rock with the old Santa hat, old Randy. Now, <laughs> this is going to be... Like I said, this is a, this is episode's going to be a bit more fun rather than serious, to be honest with you. So, we're going to have some very Christmassy attires. Basically, this tie card has been built on the Christmas attires I could find um, in the uh, community creations. And what are you thinking of the old arena as well? Very Christmassy, isn't it? This is weird because I never even assumed that I'd even upload anything on Christmas Day, to be honest. But there you go. I'm actually getting ahead of myself. I'm currently away in um, in France skiing anyway. So, well, watching other people skiing. I do a skiing. I'm the sort of person, if I go skiing, I'll end up being shipped back in a box. I'm that bad. I'm not very, uh, I'm not very stable on my feet. I'm, I'm much more, it's weird, right? I'm much more stable on my feet when I've had a few drinks. Before my drinks, I'm not that stable at all. It's crazy. So yeah, this will be Randy Orton and his opponent. I'm not. Gonna be, I'm not going to tell you. This. I'm going to treat this for you guys a bit like Mystery Vortex, because I don't want to ruin it. Um, I will say though that we've got some cracking matches that you're going to want to watch. And our main event of the evening is going to be a match that you guys will be absolutely crazy to watch as well. And as you can see, then Randy Orton's opponent for this one is going to be Bray Wyatt. And if you think Randy Orton was looking Christmassy, there's old Bray. <laughs> Rocking the full Santa outfit. There's where we go. Look at that. Good old season's beatings, eh? You can't beat it, can you? It's a very, very, very common wrestling pay-per-view name. I think a lot of uh, indie companies do like a season's beatings pay-per-view normally. Well, not pay-per-view, but a season's beatings show. And that's exactly what we're doing here. But of course, as uh, as fun as this episode is going to be, ranking points are still available. So this one, of course, this is technically a pay-per-view. All our specials are pay-per-views. So this one is worth double points. So the winner of this one's going to get plus 10. The loser's going to get minus 10. Of course, Bray Wyatt is currently our Carnage Wired Champion, although we'll be defending that Wired Championship next week on our Carnage pay-per-view against Eric Young inside the Hell in a Cell. Um, and of course, Randy Orton is currently on a pretty strong run himself, in fairness. He's defeated Larry Zabisco and Jim Neidhart uh, in successive weeks, which, in theory, those matches were so bloody short. He must have worked about 10 minutes over the last couple of weeks, uh, if that. And the majority of that was probably just his entrances. So I'm looking forward to this, actually. This will be pretty cool. This whole night, and like I said, I think it's very important to see the way the ranking points work out here as well. Who's going to get what? How it's going to work? Because there is some very important matches with some very important points up for grabs. Um, points that could really make or break someone's career. A bit like we had uh, yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah, we, we had the uh, the Monday Night War special yesterday, didn't we? A bit like that. I remember the, the main event of yesterday's show. That really... I'm not going to give any spoilers in case you haven't seen it, but that really make or break uh, one person's career in SWE in this uh, season, really. So we've got Santa Braun versus Randy Christmas. Randy Christmas, is that right? That sounds a bit dodgy, doesn't it, really? Uh, if you see on the, uh, Randy, the one thing I really like about this, you look at Randy's shirt, right? And it says on there, like, you, you know, you know, he's like, he's, sort of his tagline as such is, uh, out of nowhere, as in like the RKO. Well, this shirt he's wearing just says Out of Snowwear, which I thought was pretty funny. But then again, I am quite simple-minded. But uh, Randy is in control of, uh, of Bray at this point in time. So, yes, it's been a very Christmassy based show. I've never done a Christmas special before. This is the first time I've really done specials this year, and I quite like it because it gives us a little bit of a differential apart from our normal shows. And it allows us to pull off some of the... Uh, Pull off some of the super matches that we wouldn't have got a chance to do if we were, yeah, if we were doing sort of like um, just sticking to our normal five brands. There might be a chance where somebody would end up on one brand and 
someone on another brand. And those two people then be apart for more or less the entirety of 2K18. But having the specials in here means that we can bring these people together. Of course, both these guys are on different rosters. Uh, Randy Orton over on Mayhem. Uh, Bray Wyatt is currently over on Carnage. So it's uh, these two guys never would have fought each other if it wasn't for this pay-per-view. But come on, get back in the ring now. Oh, we're going to be a double bloody count now, aren't we? Oh. Quick run. We're not having a double count now for Christmas. We're not having a double count now for Christmas. Come on, give me a Christmas present, Bray. Get back in the ring before the turn. Oh, Bray, you absolute legend. Randy thought he'd won it, and Bray just creeps up behind him and hits the German suplex. Oh, Braun, uh, Braun Strowman. Bray White, you are my absolute hero, my man. I was terrified that we were going to end up with a dodgy double count out. That's the last thing we want in these matches. Bray now Saito. Suplex folding Randy in half. I like the way the... Uh, although I think it's struggling a bit. It looks a bit too crazy, the ring mat, doesn't it? A bit too crazy. And it's, um, it's making my eyes go a bit funny. I think it's making the screen go a little bit funny as well, to be honest. It does look like a big Christmas present. I think the whole point of the ring was to do that, wasn't it? Bray, big, stiff right hand in the gut. Oh, of Randy Orton, and there's that big front slam. Dropping a boot into the gut of Randy as well. Uh, of course, Bray's been in a pretty decent run of recent. Uh, of course, reassembling his Wyatt family brothers over on Carnage. Realigned himself with both Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. Which is working out well for all, I think, because uh, Rowan and Harper have got themselves now a tag team championship shot at our next Carnage show as well. As Bray, there's a sister Abigail on Randy Orton, hooks the leg. One, two, and f no. Ooh, that was bloody close to a three, that was. Really bloody close to a three, that was. Bray taking Randy up on his shoulders. And really can't decide what to do with him up there, really. Randy now sending Bray off the far side. Nice stiff elbow. As Randy going for that backbreaker. A stiff clothesline. Now Randy starting to hulk up. Into that short, sharp power slam. Now stamping on the arm, stamping on the knee. Now the other ankle and the final arm, or in the chest that was actually, wasn't it? And then right in the face as well to finish things off. Randy just picking the part of Bray Wyatt's body. Oh, wow. Randy just hit Sister Abigail on, Bra um, on Brave. And one, two... And three, and Randy Orton defeats Bray Wyatt with Bray's own manoeuvre. Wow. That was a pretty interesting way to do it, Orton, I'll tell you. And Orton, then big victory for him. He's going to get himself the 10 ranking points over on Mayhem, which he needed because, in fairness, he started this universe mode quite low down. Um, he started this universe mode in a situation where he was... Low in the rankings. He was quite low. He was like one from bottom, I think, in the rankings. But with a few back-to-back -back victories he's earned over the last few weeks, he's definitely got himself higher and higher. And this was a big test for him. And he took it. His first real decent opponent in quite some time, to be honest, in Bray Wyatt. And uh, I'm quite happy with what I've seen so far from Bray. And uh, from, well, from Randy, really. Randy was when he picked up the victory, I suppose. But the sister, Abigail, finished by Randy Orton. That was incredibly cheeky. And Randy walks away victorious. Victorious. Yeah, those 10 ranking points are going to be invaluable. I think that puts him over the 100 mark now because he started off about 85 or something like that. So I think now uh, over the last few weeks, I think he's got himself now over 100, which is the main... If you can get over that 100 mark, that's when you're obviously in a much better situation because there's a lot of people on 100 with a lot of new people joining the universe mode this year. And here we go, then here comes in to 
our second match of the evening and we're starting things off with of course Big Santa himself The Big Show <laughs> Look at him How cool does he look Oh bloody hell <laughs> oh, I, I, This is going to be such a random weird show I hope you're ready for this It's going to be really really random and weird But I, I like it I do like it Look at him look Oh no he's going to have a glitchy thingy is he we're going to bring back the old Kushida Dong glitch, are we? Yep. The Kushida Dong glitch is upon us with <laughs> Big Show. Luckily, I don't think he wrestles in this coat. This is just a coat he has an entrance. <coughs> Look how big his sleeves are. Wow. There we go. Yeah, he's taking the coat off now. He's still keeping the uh, the white beard and the hat on, though. And the glasses, the spectacles. The spectacles are the main thing. You can't wrestle without the spectacles. Make a spectacle of yourself. Okay, Brock is rocking the old Universal Championship, as you do. Um, partly because... Well, solely because I forgot to take it off. Um, but that's the reason why. <laughs> Essentially, because I've got all my cores filled up on all the other save files, I've had to create a separate save file just to download and do this uh, show. Um, and obviously, I've missed the layer off where you get rid of all the championship belts which makes me wonder about the later on in the evening so you haven't got a belt 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 you potentially could have one but i don't think you have and you haven't so we we should this might be the only belt we see tonight i think i think i hope i have no idea what i'm doing either way i have a freaking wee so Brock Lesnar versus the Big Show, another big match. Of course, Brock Lesnar over on Carnage. Uh, currently feuding with Matanza Cueto. And I think at some point there may be... Well, I don't know, next week's show, next week's special show, we will see the finale of that uh, that feud between both Brock Lesnar and Matanza Cueto. So Brock could really do with the momentum moving into that match, but he's got to get past the big slow first of all to do so. Now, you may think Brock's taken off his um, his Christmas hat. He might not be feeling as Christmassy now. But if you look at his Suplex City shirt, he does have uh, Christmas lights on it, so it's not all bad. I think he does. He did in the picture. To be honest, there wasn't many Christmassy attires on Community Creations, and... Uh, and the fact that he was wearing a Christmas hat was maybe the main reason why I downloaded him, to be honest. And he should have had that, um, yeah, the 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 Christmas lights on his Suplex City shirt. I think they're there. I saw him in the screenshot. It's difficult to see. It's so difficult to see. Let's just pretend they are. Let's just pretend it is Christmassy. Let's pretend I'm doing my job correctly, eh? That's the best way forward. And wow, is Brock stalking? Brock has just taken Big Show up already. Brock notoriously not paid by the hour here in SWE. Boom. F5, middle of the ring. I think Brock may have just squashed the big show. There's the pin. One. Two. No, big show kicked out. Thank God for that. That would be an awful match. That would have been, wouldn't it? So Brock continuing the assault. Now looking to lock in a camel clutch. Does locks in the camel clutch. Really going for... Oh, he's tapped out. Wow, okay. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Brock didn't win, of course, with the uh, the F5, but was able to finish him off there with the submission, the camel clutch. Not quite expecting that, to be honest, but there we go. There we go. There you see the Christmas lights on his Suplex City shirt now. Okay, we've got a cutscene, haven't we? So Brock Lesnar, of course, gets himself the 10 points. Big Show, minus 10 over on Mayhem. And Brock just adding insult to injury now, just stomping on Big Show. Why on earth is there any subtitles on this uh, on this uh, save file? That's weird. And here is our next match of the evening. It is going to be, first of all, hailing from the Hall of Pain, the one and only Mark Henry. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, we're really going all out here with these dodgy attires, aren't we, this evening? <laughs> I love the way he's like a really angry Santa as well. Angry Santa. He might be an angry Santa once he finds out who his opponent is going to be this evening. That could be a worry for him. This should be fun. I'm looking forward to this. So we've got three more matches for you, including this one. And they're just, they're all going to be, I think you're going to enjoy every single attire. I do think the main event is definitely going to be a match that you guys are really going to be happy with. A good Christmas present from me to you. Somebody's Christmas Day today as well. I hope you guys have a good Christmas Day. If you have, then like the video, you know. It's a nice way of me conning some likes out of you, isn't it, really? <laughs> if you're not already, subscribe again. Con some subscriptions out of you as well, you know. YouTube has got to do what YouTube has got to do. And then, of course, Mark Henry's opponent is going to be Braun Snowman. <laughs> Oh my god, I didn't even think about that. That just came out straight away, Braun Snowman. Oh, wow. Oh my god. Oh my god. Braun Snowman, I like that. I like that a lot. I wish I'd thought about that beforehand. I really do. Oh my god. Oh god. Craziness. Absolute craziness. So again, we've got the glitchiness with the the belt on Braun's jacket. However, I believe that he will take the jacket off. I don't think that he actually wrestles in the jacket. Although I think Mark Henry does wrestle in his jacket. I believe. There we go. So Mark Henry versus Braun Strowman. Another valuable 10 ranking points up for grabs here. Of course, Braun Strowman, the current Carnage champion as well. We'll be defending that belt next week against, I can't remember, Mil Muertes. Yeah, so Braun Strowman versus Mil Muertes is coming up for you next week on our Carnage pay-per-view. Braun now dropping Mark Henry face first. Wow, we accidentally making loads of squash matches here this evening. I'm literally just making matches just to give people what I've got. I've got a certain amount of people I could have picked because of Christmas attires. Wow. One... Two. Wow, it's a very happy Christmas for Braun Strowman. Following in the footsteps of Brock Lesnar with a squash victory and getting himself another easy 10 ranking points. I was not expecting this to be so easy. Well, we're only 21 minutes in and I've only got two matches left, but I feel like the next two matches will be ones that will last a lot longer because they're much more balanced, maybe. Brock versus Big Show. Braun versus Mark Henry. I don't know why the, I don't know why there's squashes. I knew that squashes existed, but I thought there was like a certain difference in stats you had to get first. But at the point in time, we've got it's just a bit it's a bit crazy, isn't it? I, I didn't think it would be that that much because I think Mark Henry's like 82 and Braun's 88, so it is six points difference. And I think Brock is 92 and Big Show's like 82 or something like that. So that's ten points difference. But I'm just surprised, really, just how. How many squash matches we're getting? I quite like it though, I must admit. I think especially for guys like Braun and guys like Brock, I think it makes sense. And Braun gets another 10 ranking points. He's always going to be a main man, I think, for us in SWE. And here is our next match of the evening. A bit more balanced, I'm hoping, this one. The last two have been pretty much squash matches. But this one, we're going to start things off first of all. With a knock on the door. You know what's coming. You know what's coming. There he is. It's Bad Santa himself. That is a film he's in, isn't it? He's in a film called Bad Santa. And he's got the dodgy... Uh, the dodgy erection coat as well. Is he in Bad Santa? I thought he was. Bill Goldberg. No. I'm sure PJ Toby's shown me this before. Goldberg. Yeah, there it is. Santa Slay. Santa Slay, it's called. Santa Claus is actually a demon who lost a bet with an angel, so he becomes the giver of toys and happiness. But when 
the bet is off, he returns to his evil ways. Starring Bill Goldberg as Santa. Bill Goldberg as Santa. That is just one of the most bizarre castings I think I've ever seen in my entire, entire life. You can currently buy it for £2.50 on Amazon. On disc as well. Wow. Um, It's got an average of 5.4 out of 10 stars, which is possibly more than what I expected, to be honest. It's called Santa's Sleigh. Wow, they're spelt... Oh, no. I was going to say they're spelt Sleigh wrong, but they didn't. They, they've, it's a play on words. They've used Sleigh as in slaying people rather than... Uh, this is actually not... Mm, it's not the right attire, is it? Of course, Santa in Santa's sleigh, he's got a long white beard and long white hair. Someone's just gone for a bad Santa vibe, but just basically putting a, a white shirt on him. Seems like the way. It's just such a weird thing for Goldberg to do. Being a dodgy Christmas film. Well, you should Google it. When you, when, when you finish watching this, just Google it. And right, here comes his opponent then. The King of Christmas. It's Santa Helmsley. <laughs> oh, these attires are just turning me crazy, I tell you. They really are turning me crazy. I don't even know what I'm watching half the time. I really don't. It's just so bizarre to look at Triple H dressed up the way he is. Oh, my God. So bizarre just to look at this the way it is. So Goldberg versus Triple H. This should be a lot more of an even match. The last couple have been very one-sided, one way or another. And it's been... It, it's good. I like it. I do like it. I like the changes. I like the differences. Um, and I think that having those different styles of matches has really given us a lot more difference in the universe mode. Last year, you'd put a rank 100 versus a rank 0. Uh, I will say um, stats wise and it would be a very even match and the Zerang Zero would have a very good chance of winning still for some apparent reason um, but this time you have the big difference in stats and you do get squash matches and that's what we've seen so far I like that I think the I think that's what they should do if you've got a higher ranked a higher rated person they should have a boost in their in their momentum so what they should do right this is my plan right if you've got two people, say one, just for argument's sake, one of them's 50 and one of them's 100, I think you should work out the percentages and then say it would work the way it would work out. If you add all their rankings up together and worked out the percentages, then the guy of 100 would be 66% of the overall rankings and the guy of 33 would be 33%. So that means to me that the guy with the 66 pence should be able to raise their momentum bar twice as quick as the other guy. Does that make any sense? Am I going mad or what? Or I just think that would be a much more balanced way of doing it and it would still make it a bit more realistic at the same time. I don't know. I like the squash matches. I would love this to be a bit more like, if, I don't know if anyone else had played this in the past, but Extreme Warfare Revenge, that was a fun game that was, where you literally used to build your own rosters, but it was all digital based, it was all text based. Uh, you didn't watch anything, but you basically hired and fired all your... Uh, all your staff, all your wrestlers from all different companies around the world. It was really fun. You can still download it now and you can download mods that will bring it up to current day. So if you've not played it before, I definitely suggest you're going to have a look. It's all free. It's called Extreme Warfare Revenge. And uh, yeah, you can get an up-to-date patch and so that. Or you can go back and you can get like a Monday Night Wars patch and you can relive the Monday Night Wars. Or you can go back to the 80s classic patch or whatever. There's something out there for everyone. Um, but I like that because basically when you built a show, you would say, I want this person versus this person. Then you say, I want this person to win. And it will say, why? We say, well, I want this person to win because I want to put this person over or I want to expand a rivalry or stuff like that. And then you can do after match, you can do running. So you can say, I want this person to run in during the match and I want it to go badly. And then it would switch and then um, it would be really cool. It, it does work really well. And that's what I'd like more from WWE, really. I'd like more creative control. I'd like to be able to say, I want this cutscene to play here and then I want this to lead into this match so what I basically want is the old we want the old um, storyline creator battle that's what we really want don't we if I could type the promos that we wanted to do 
and see the guy who's given them. I think that would be the best way forward. If I could type in saying, oh, I want you, I want to wrestle you in a Lever Leaves Town match tonight. There's no way of doing that on the game. But if we could use the old, uh, yeah, I, I really miss that. I didn't really use it much at the time, but I do really miss it now. Goldberg, oh, powerbomb on the, uh, oh, on the apron, then spun him around and spam him into that apron once again. Goldberg brutalizing Triple H on the outside. I'm off tangent now. On, uh, I promise. I'm back on the. I'm back on the correct frame of mind. F frame of mind. Frame of mind. He says he can't even get himself right in the frame of mind. Frame of mind. Okay. I haven't said the right words anymore. Am I saying the right words? I have no idea. So Triple H now choking the grounded Santa Goldberg. Braun Snowman. Oh my God, that was amazing. Braun Snowman. Ugh. I think that deserves a like as it is anyway, doesn't it? I'll tell you what, just for a bit of fun, if you're still watching this point in time, put in the comment section down below your best wrestling Christmas puns. It can be names, it can be anything really. I like Braun Snowman, but if you've got any others, I can't think of any others now, to be honest with you. I'm sure there must be loads. I'm sure there must be loads. But yeah, if you've got any, then uh, put them down in the comment section down below, and we'll have a little bit of a we'll have a little bit of a competition. See who can come up with the best one. Goldberg now taking Hunter up, looking for the jackhammer. This could be another very important ten points for Goldberg. It is. Goldberg is really coming into it of recent. He struggled for quite some time building himself up. He was really low down on the rankings from 2K17, but now he's really starting to pick himself up. And we could see a good run for Goldberg towards this universe. Well, he's got himself in a very good position now to, to do it. Goldberg offered a handshake and receives that handshake there from Triple H. Great respect being shown here by these two guys who are both on Mayhem this year. So a full PJ Tony match, this one. Here we go then, time for your main event of the evening. And I've been promising you a big one, and that's exactly what I've got. Starting things off with, of course, the man, the myth. He's got a championship on, which I thought wasn't going to happen, but he's got one anyway. Ignore that. Of course, it's Mr. Slay J. Childs. Slay J. Styles. Oh, I ruined it. Yeah, I thought of another pun, and it wasn't a very good pun, I must admit. Slay J. Styles. Wow, I, I can't believe I forgot to take all the championships. I've literally started a brand new universe on a brand new um, save file. Just be able to get these people because I've not. I've run out. I said to you earlier, didn't I? I run out of. I run out of uh, core slots and all my other accounts. And the one thing I forgot to do, I set everything up, set up all the new show, put the new arena on, download all the uh, tires, and put them all into the correct wrestlers. And, and the one thing I forgot to do was take off the bloody generic championships. Oh, there's always one, isn't there? There's always one, and it's generally me. But there we go, Slay J Styles. Is there anyone better than that? Um, I can't think of any. I quite like this attire. Thing is, this attire really suits him. Like some of the other attires throughout the night have been like really stupid, just Christmassy ones, just for the sake of it. Whereas this one for AJ Styles, I think it actually looks pretty cool on him. The green and red combination, I think, that's pretty cool. And I think you may have guessed who Slay J Styles' opponent is going to be here this evening. It's a little bit of a Christmas demon for you all. What more could you want on Christmas Day than AJ Styles versus Finn Balor? But not just AJ Styles versus Finn Balor. AJ Styles versus Finn Balor rocking Christmas attires. That's what you really want in this world. If you can't just sit there and enjoy Christmas attires, what is there left for you in the world these days, I'll tell you. But let's see what Finn's special attire has got for us. And I have turned the, I've turned the game volume up a little bit this time, because I've realised I don't listen back to my videos very often. I edit very, very lazily, I must admit. And I don't listen back to my videos, but I've realised there's not a lot of background volume. and It was nice to actually have um, a bit of crowd noise, hopefully, in this show. 
Hopefully it's working. Hopefully I've not put the crowd noise not too loud and you can't hear me anyway. And there he is, of course. Santa Bala. Rocking the green and red and the white of Christmas. And then it is. Is it supposed to be a white Christmas this year? I believe. I heard randomly it was supposed to be a white Christmas this year. Um, it will be for me because like I say I'm, I'm actually away in France in the... Uh, in the old mountains in France, so it's definitely going to be snowing where I am. I think it's really it's supposed to be a very blustery, snowy day where I am going to be on Christmas Day, so that should be pretty interesting. I'm looking forward to this one. Then Finn Balor versus AJ Styles, a match that we've all wanted to see. We've seen it once in WWE, and it was very there wasn't much build up for it, and it still was a very, very good match because you just know you've got two fantastic guys who you know can pull off that sort of match so the question is now the question is now can they pull it off with a better build up and I feel like that will happen at some point in time whether AJ um, moves up to Raw or whether Finn moves over to Smackdown that would be the interesting situation one of them is bound to happen eventually I think Finn moving to Smackdown would be pretty good actually uh, I feel like it would be a good move for him a really good move for SmackDown because they could possibly do with the extra uh, main event name. Whereas, I don't know where it would work though because I feel like just the demon is a very red and black character and of course Raw being a very red and black show and it feels more Raw to me but I don't know, I just... AJ feels more like a SmackDown name to me. So it's a... Uh, it's tricky, isn't it? It's tricky. I'd like to see him do some good stuff. So Finn Balor versus AJ Styles. The Battle of Christmas. The Phenomenal One versus the Demon. But which one will walk away here with, of course, the 15 ranking points? Wow, Finn locked straight into a sling blade. We're not going to get a squash match here, surely. No way we're going to get a squash match here. I don't think we are. Just that, that sling blade right at the beginning just confused me there for a second. AJ fight back with a jawbreaker now into a hurricanrana. And a guy, again, I, I like both these guys at ties and... It's one thing that Finn's uh, special is really good at either way, isn't it? Finn's, Finn's attire, there's just always bound to be a good Finn a Balor attire for every special we need, isn't there, really? <laughs> That's the really cool thing about him, really. We've had him in the Halloween special. We've had him in... Um, we've had him, of course, rocking recently themed attires for some of his opponents over on Mayhem. We've seen him rocking a samurai attire for the match against... Um, the great Muta as well, and now rocking a special Christmas attire here for the match against Slay J Styles. Any other Christmas puns I can think of? Oh, I don't know. A gut buster there and Finn. I can't really think. Of, I'm. I'm. Sometimes I'm very good at thinking of that sort of thing, and other times I can never really think about it. Um, no, I can't think of one. I really can't. I'm under pressure. Under pressure. Do, 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 do. Nice neck breaker there by Finn Balor. He follows it with a running double axe. I know that move never seems to hit right. I don't know whether it's just the, uh, the dodgy animation afterwards or whether the fact they always miss. I'm not quite sure. It's one or the other. A knee in the gut there by AJ, then a rolling forearm as well. AJ bringing Finn back up to a seated base, now up to a kneeling base. A chop across the chest of Finn, now into a short, sharp DDT. Now AJ Styles, a bit of a uh, announcement here for you. AJ Styles will be one of three men in our Adrenaline Championship match tomorrow on our Adrenaline pay-per-view. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. Uh, Finn Balor, of course, has another big match coming up on Mayhem as well in a few days' time. Uh, of course, he's wrestled three legends so far in the shape of Mankind, Kane, 
and Sting. And he's come out victorious against all three of them. So he's still on a very strong run. And I'd like to see how far Finn Balor can go. He's got another big match uh, this week on Mayhem. And then, of course, up to the pay-per-view. Be interesting to see what comes at the pay-per-view. As Finn hits that shotgun dropkick. Heads up top. Looking for the coup de grace. Finn Balor coup de grace. There's the pin. One, two. And AJ Styles kicks out. Both these guys desperate for this momentum. And, of course, the ranking points as well. Both these guys very high up on the ranking points, I must admit. I don't think it should matter too much to them if they do lose this match. But 15 points, of course, is the equivalent of winning three matches on normal shows. So it is very, very important. Finn slowly getting back up to his feet on the outside. And AJ just spears him off the apron, crashing down to the Christmassy mat on the outside. AJ willing Finn Balor back up to his feet. Oh, before really bodging an acai moonsault, but it worked. Nonetheless, he just didn't spring off the ropes for some reason. Forearm there by Finn Balor. Taking AJ up on his shoulders. AJ fighting back with a reverse suplex on Finn Balor. AJ bringing Finn back up to his feet. But Finn fighting back, sending AJ back into the ring. And now Finn needs to get back in there himself. The referee was counting. AJ takes Finn up on his shoulders into the Yurigoroshi. Oh, but Finn playing possum, catching AJ with a boot in the face and a rolling forearm of his own. Really good match this one, but exactly what we expected from these two guys. We know they are top class wrestlers. And together, nice. Nice drop kick there in the corner. Together, they can just pull out the most insane matches. AJ once again with Finn on his shoulders. Oh, I've never seen that move before, I must admit. It was almost like um, a reverse Death Valley driver into Sidewalk Slam. It was weird. But now AJ on the apron, lining Finn up potentially for the phenomenal forearm and hits it. AJ drops into the pin. Is it going to be enough? One, two, and three. And AJ Styles picks up the victory here. In the main event of Seasons Beatings, our Christmas pay-per-view against Christmas Finn Balor. And there we go, the match that had everything that we really hoped from it. It was maybe could have gone a little bit longer, you know, but still, I really enjoyed this match. Hoping you guys did as well. And it's a good 15 ranking points plus for AJ Styles, whereas minus 15 for Finn Balor. Which is not gonna it's not gonna hurt Finn Balor too much, but it probably it, the win here could have done him a lot more benefit really. Because AJ Styles, I think he's in the top two or three on adrenaline, whereas Finn Balor's in the top sort of fifteen on mayhem, so Finn could have really used this as a another step up to push himself further up the rankings. But there we go guys, that is the end of this video. Hope you have enjoyed it. Of course, if you have, then please do hit that like and of course subscribe if you are new around here. Of course, once again, Merry Christmas. It is Christmas Day today. I hope you are enjoying it. And uh, I can't believe I managed to get a video out on Christmas Day, to be honest with you. But there you go. That's my Christmas present to all of you guys. And, uh, of course, if you do have any Christmas puns, drop them down in the comment section below. We'll have a bit of a, we'll have a, bit of a laugh. I will be available to uh, to check all my comments while I'm away because I'm taking my laptop with me. I've got Wi-Fi in the, uh, the chalet I'm staying in, so that would be pretty cool anyway. Uh, so, yeah, I've been Shabby Gamer. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow for our next pay-per-view, which is going to be Adrenaline. Bye. 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 Bye.